Hello, folks, and welcome to Milledgeville Centennial Center here on the campus of beautiful Georgia College. Sorry for a short delay there with our video stream. We are up and running, though. And right now, Queens off and running four threes so far for the folks from Charlotte. Bobcats have a pair of their own, thanks to Jordan Thomas with six points on the night. But a 12-6 lead for Queens early on in what's a very interesting matchup, our second matchup of the day here at the Bobcat crossover for the first matchup of the year for the home team. Georgia College Bobcats here on the Bobcat broadcast. Now we're glad to have you with us, folks. My name is Sam Jones. Sean Montgomery will be joining us shortly. Christian Thomas pressing the buttons upstairs. Happy to be with you for the opening game of the 2017-18 season. Bobcats come in with interesting expectations, to say the least. Seven new folks coming in, and a couple new folks already starting, making their presence felt. Justin Thomas, one of those, the freshman coming in, hitting a pair of threes early in his first collegiate game. But this Queens team, number two in the country, very, very talented. As we get the ball in, we have a shot clock issue. Not quite sure what the problem is. It'd be a violation, but it looked like it shorted awful quickly. Bobcats will take the ball. Desmond Mitchell of Flam will take the ball up. The redshirt senior leading the way at the point for the Bobcats this season. Passed over. Corner, it's Bryce Booker back out to Laflam. This is number three. Justin Cave driving in his Garrick to Bowles and layup well off target. Back the other way goes the All-American Jalen Alexander drops it off to Daniel Carr in the corner, pump fake. Back to Alexander for three, missed. And the putback. Earns a foul and a trip to the line for Daryl White. Twelve six score, thirteen ten left on the clock. And again, talking about this Queens team coming in last year, thirty and four overall record. They took out Virginia Commonwealth. That was an NCAA tournament up in the Big Boy League Division One. I didn't see a tournament team, rather. It's Queen's team. Took on. It's Queen's team. Took on Wake Forest a moment ago. A couple weeks ago. Excuse me one second. Queens hits one free throw. Daryl White now with one point to his name. 13-6 score. And DeBowles finds himself underneath the basket, lays it up and in. And turnover, Bobcat ball. It was number three. We don't have a name for it. On her sheet right here, Sean Willett taking the ball in, giving it away. As I was saying a moment ago, this Queens team took on Wake Forest in an exhibition about a week ago, only lost by two to an ACC team. That's pretty impressive. It's Cole Roberts with the ball in his hand, making a move. Isaac Thomas, top of the key. Over to Austin Dukes, now under Roberts. Way up. No good, and Roberts, the big body, took out number zero, Ike Agassi. Welcome in, Sean Montgomery. Yeah, uh, a lot of technical difficulties already at the start of this game, um, but we worked through those, and we're off to a pretty good start. Um, only down five points here early going. Just got to take care of the ball and limit the fouls we've had early on. Only five-point advantage for Queens right now. In the first game we saw him. Extremely exciting matchup to North Georgia and Emmanuel. Those teams will trade counterparts tomorrow. Bobcats will face Emmanuel. Queens will face North Georgia. North Georgia ended up being the victor in overtime. 102-92. The final score there. Around the horn goes the Royals and the shot from Agassiz. Floater off the rim. And into the hands of the Bobcats who picked up a foul on the way. Not sure on who. 
We'll give it to Sean Willett. And that's our second media timeout. Our first for as long as we've been on the air. We're under 12. Bobcats down five. Hey, a lot of work left to do. 11.55 on the clock. Back in a moment on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. Hey, Banks. Have a seat and let me make you uncomfortable. Up those grades, son. Or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me. You're still awake? Have a seat on old Mr. Bench. At least your buns will fall asleep. <laughs> is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college? Hey, man, T, move down. It's a tearjerker! Change is constant. Technologies, careers, society... Georgia College is not about landing your first job. It's about preparing for success in a changing world. From the moment you step on campus, you have an immediate sense of belonging. At Georgia College, learning takes place all around the us. Bulls, Our Chapin, students are Ryerson, critical Austin, thinkers, Dukes, ready Rice, to graduate to Isaac Thomas complex world. on the floor. We'll Georgia College, more. you're about these new Bobcat faces as the night goes along. Sam Jones, Sean Montgomery with you on the Bobcat Broadcast Network for our home opener in the season opener for Georgia College. Dukes will take the ball up the floor. The freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia, has the ball taken away. Fast break for Alexander. Easy layup, 15-8. Alexander last year, 13.3 points per game. And a block on Alexander as soon as I mention him. Yeah, strong move to the hole there by Dukes. Just caught him with his head up, looking for a screen, and just blew by him on the right side and did well to get to the free throw line. Dukes, like I said, a sophomore from Grayson High School, former Ram. A lot of long athletic players for Queens. Really favorable for the Bobcats if we do kind of slow the pace down just a little bit and we do get to the free throw line and make our free throws as Dukes do. That's there. what the Bobcats are going to try to do. Queens moves at a very fast pace. They were the number one scoring team in the country last year, 87.3 points per game. That is the opposite of Gaines ball. Mark Gaines is going to try to slow things down, slow the pace. It's an interesting contrast of styles here as Duke knocks down both of them. Five-point advantage for Queens. Alexander off the screen, kicks it out. To will it now across the floor. Still moving around, almost taken away by Bryce Booker. Alexander recovers. Will it? Sean Will it with space. Taken on Isaac Thomas. Spins blocked. Look at the former PBC freshman of the year stepping up defensively. Did well to give him his space there, and he had to know that he was going to get the block the entire way there. Um, elevated really nicely and all ball. So a good play there on the defensive side for the Bobcats as we enter another timeout. Timeout taken. We'll stay right with you. Isaac last year averaged .8 blocks per game. Same number for him in the conference. Picks up one early. 15-10 the score. So far, leading score for the Bobcats, jo Jordan Thomas. Six points on a pair of threes. Meanwhile, Garrett DeBowles has a couple points as well. Austin Dukes with the bear. For the Bobcats, gets them at 10. Queens, meanwhile, led by Todd Withers. Withers with a pair of threes before we came on the air. Six points for him. Hey, Mike thanks. Davis with three points. Jalen Alexander with three points as well. A whole bunch of threes coming in from all side. sorts of angles from Queens. They've yet to make anything but a three. <laughs> yeah, similar theme to what we saw last game. Um, the game prior before this one. Uh, threes everywhere. It seemed like just kick out to the corner, drive and kick. And that's been a coming good here for Queens as they jump out to a five point lead. And with Queens, it feels like just about every single one of them can shoot the three ball. No spot on the floor. Can be left unopened, and there's a good example of it right there. As Withers took a big shot from deep, and now another shot clock issue. We're going to keep playing, and there's Withers. Back again, second try is the charm. And Queens up by eight. Withers now with nine. Three of four from behind the arc. The Bulls. The athletic 
forward, finds Ryerson. Ryerson looking for Dukes, gives the ball away. Poor decision from the freshman. Alexander kicks it out. Three ball from number 14. And that's Josh Van Wiesen. And it's a 21-10 advantage for Queens. Got to take care of the ball. You saw that, we gave him an extra chance there on the board and they converted on those second chance points. He gets the ball down here and we have silly turnover. It's just a floppy pass, um, trying to get it back to the top of the key to reset the offense. And those are easy points for Queens all day. Well, Chapin getting his first start of his collegiate career, just a freshman, he's 6'4", 205 though. A freshman from Calhoun, Georgia, Calhoun High School. Dude can jump out of the building. You wouldn't expect it, but he can get up. It's, it's kind of impressive to watch him in practice. But sometimes loses his head a little bit. You saw it there. Made a poor decision to get the ball back to Austin. Taken away by Alexander, and the All-American makes him pay. Full court press given the Bobcats issue. Another turnover. Bryce Booker throws the ball away. Taken away by Agassi. And a foul. I think we're going to give that to the Bulls. Yes, we are. Push from Garrick. Once again, just too much air under the pass. This team is too long and athletic to be trying to lob the ball into the space. You see the guards have already gotten three or four turnovers in the last two possessions um, just from bad passes. Ball ended by Agassi. Davis works it around, and there's Agassi. The threes continue to rain down on Georgia College. And if things don't get comfortable shortly, or if things don't change shortly, Bobcats could be in trouble. Dukes looking for a foul call, nothing doing. Here's Agassi. Queens working the ball very well. And once again, another three that time. It was number 14, Josh Van Wiesep, once again, 27-10. Queens has absolutely taken off on the Bobcats. Okay, Chris Danis, there's two timeouts in a span of 25 seconds. What do you tell the team here in the I don't know. <laughs> Queens is just working the ball around the perimeter so, so well, and they can't miss. Trying to get the live stats up and running for us here, but have to assume Queens shooting well above 70% from behind the arc. And that's what they did all last year. They shot 50, over 50% from the field. Best scoring team in the country. There's a reason they're number two coming into the year. A lot of speed and size. They're going to have those chances on the perimeter to get open shots, and they're making them. That's really the difference between both teams so far in this game. Um, if they jump out to a 17-point lead, they're largest of the ball game. And an inexperienced and maybe undersized Bobcat team getting hammered early and often by the Royals. Justin Thomas takes the ball up. The ball is on the wing. Back to Desmond Mitchell Laflem. Bobcats moving the ball nicely. Justin Kay finds Isaac Thomas in the post. Thomas, hook shot, rolls in and out. Ball moved quickly. Guy, it's just flying around the perimeter. And Queens isn't going to miss tonight, folks. Man, oh man, it's Mike Davis' turn this time. 30 to 10. Absolutely incredible. Is that 10 threes? It very well might be. I'm losing track. Isaac Thomas down in the post. Blocked. At least affected enough to keep it from going in. The ball smacks it away. As the ball comes to Ryan Aquino, he smacks it away as well in frustration. Early Bobcat on, assistant coach. Early on, you definitely see the two differences in each offense. We're just dumping it down to Isaac Thomas in the low post, trying to get some good offense going at a slower pace. And Queens just gets the rebound, hops it out to the wing, and they just shoot threes all day. So I'm not sure I've ever seen a Division II team come in here and shoot the way Queens is shooting right now. Absolutely stunning. And what was a pretty loud and pretty big Bobcat crowd, pretty stunned right now. Queens finally misses. Desmond Mitchell Flem takes the ball up the floor. DML takes a three well off. Missed by about a foot and a half. Bobcats are struggling. Across the floor. Ryerson got up in the air. 
Unfortunately, no shot taken. Here's Agassi driving in, in the middle of the paint. It was number 11, Solomon Smith. And at least that was a two. Yeah, showing their versatility on offense. They haven't had to get in the paint, but showing that they can when they have to. Justin Thomas for three. The one bright spot tonight for the Bobcats. The freshman has nine points. He's going to have to make a lot of those big shots for the Bobcats if we're going to get back into this game. Jordan Thomas, nine points in Tess Mitchell fun. Maybe getting a little too fancy saved by Thomas. Chapin Ryerson takes a three off the back iron. Fight for the ball. Foul. We're going to give that one to, I believe, Justin Cave. Jordan Thomas, 6'1", freshman from Conyers, Georgia, over at Heritage High School. He's had a good night so far tonight. If you weren't looking at the Queens scoreboard, you'd be a little more excited about that. Simmons is making every shot here for the Bobcats. Bobcats took a trip down to Georgia Southern in the preseason play and exhibition. Jordan Thomas is very, very good in that one. Took a lot of shots from the corner. Knocked down a few threes. Probably the most exciting of this freshman class. Again, seven new Bobcats coming in to this season. Tough task for Coach Gaines to kind of take these guys and mold them into a team winning early on, especially against a team like Queens. For sure. I mean, you can tell that the pace is getting in their heads. I mean, we are a team that plays a lot slower. We want to get into a half-court offense, run some set plays more often. But Queens just gets the ball out so fast, we just want to have to match that pace when we're on offense, and that just sometimes hurts us as we can't score with a team like Queens. We just want to play more defense, and we haven't done that so far early on. Rotation hasn't been there, but to give a ton of credit to Queens, the ball is just zipping from spot to spot. It's like a shot out of a cannon with each pass. Moves around. It's a shell game, and then as soon as you figure out where it finally is, the ball's already up and in. And a variety of shooters, too. It's not just mm -hmm. coming from one set player that you can maybe double team or trap in the corner. Um, three players I've seen make threes on the last three possessions. I just don't know who to guard. 32-13. Bobcats down 19. We're not even at the second half yet. Another pull up from three. This time it goes out. Rebound Cole Roberts. Jordan Thomas takes the ball up on the far side. Thomas driving. Bounce pass to Dukes. Dukes in the lane. Thinks better of it. Back to DML. Desmond Mitchell with Flem. Now Cole Roberts back out to DML. Des still back to Roberts. Roberts has to pull up. Misses. Yeah, not a good offense there for the Bobcats. Just working a 1-2 game, leaving half the offense on the left side, just stagnant. Mike Davis holding on the ball as long as he wants, finally. Finds a Royal down low, and then a great pass. That was Jalen Alexander finding number 11, Solomon Smith. And a foul called off the ball. Ball head back to Queens. Offensive foul there by Roberts. Officials saying he made contact with the chin of the Queens player. Couldn't see who that was. Cole with already three fouls. About to have to sit for a while as he heads back to the bench. Isaac Thomas, who did check out for a second, has to come right back in. Shot clock malfunction? I guess. Seems like we've been having that issue for a couple years. Thirty-four, thirteen, here in the six-minute mark of the first half. Bobcats down three touchdowns, and look at the ball back, a charge. No, we we'll call it a block. No, we, we won't. I'm very confused. We saw multiple signals being thrown around there. Foul eventually given. Number thirty-three, Todd Withers. Bobcat ball, Chapin Ryerson. The lanky freshman takes the ball up. DML. 
over to Dukes. And to Thomas. Back out to Dez. Dez can't find anybody. Bobcat offense just standing still. Down to five, DML has to take a long three, well off target. Seemed to be a similar theme. Once we get the ball into the half court set, we just try to get Isaac posting up on a low block. And if he's not gonna get shots up and make the defense respect him, they're just gonna stay on our guards in the perimeter all day. Bobcat offense working at about as well as a boat on land. I can think of many more <laughs> analogies, whatever you want to call it. It ain't pretty. That's all I'm going to say right now. Queens fires a three from the corner. This time Daryl White misses long. Jordan Thomas. Now Isaac Thomas. A couple of Thomases on the team now for the Bobcats. Jordan Thomas pulling up. Hello. Can play. There's a lot of confidence. You see the confidence in him when he's shoots the ball when he has the ball in his hand even he wants the ball he wants to shoot the ball he's creating his own shots <laughs> which we haven't seen in a long time in Bobcat uniform since maybe Terrell, Terrell Harris White Anderson absolutely of course Terrell over in Germany now Dwight Anderson over on the bench as an assistant coach and foul on Isaac Thomas and Isaac Thomas disagrees Queen says into the bonus Dale White heads to the line Definitely the last thing you want if you're the Bobcats in the bonus with 4.32 left to go in the first half, already down by a large margin. It was 21, it's 18 after the Jordan Thomas three-pointer. And White sends it back to a 19-point advantage for the Royals. Free throw is missed and a foul on Queens. Foul awarded to Jalen Alexander. His first of the night. Isaac Thomas will unbound him. Bobcats might have broken the press. Great pass to Thomas. Thomas to Thomas on the connection. And look at Jordan Thomas. Man, oh, man. Is that 14 points? Out of the 18 for the Bobcats. Definitely a huge bright spot having an excellent first half. A freshman from over in Conyers, just south of Atlanta. Long shot taken and missed. Queens has cooled off a little bit from behind the arc. Taken in and blocked by Ryerson. Chapin showing he has little hops and the Bobcats immediately turn it over. And that's what I get back to. You want to play at a faster pace, but it's just not our style of play. Um, half, half court offense isn't working. Uh, a lot of turnovers already in foul trouble. Not much working here for the Bobcats. 3.53, Bobcats down 17. Maybe starting to get in the groove a little bit. Keep getting the ball to Jordan Thomas. Why not at this point? Bobcats, drill by 17. We'll be back in a moment on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. Hey, Banks. Have a seat and let me make you uncomfortable. Up those grades, son or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me. You're still awake? Have a seat on old Mr. Bench. At least your buns will fall asleep. <laughs> is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college? Hey, man, team, move down. It's a tearjerker!
35-18, Queens in the lead. So far, the story for the Royals is three ball after three ball. Meanwhile, in the white shirts for the good guys, Jordan Thomas. What a start to his career. Yeah, great spark here. He's out here playing with a lot of confidence against the number two team in the country. And he's working his own game really well. And it's been what's really kept the Bobcats even close in this game. Queens shifting the ball around. Here's Agassi. Agassi quick handles. Drive by Willett. And Willett's fouled. Agassi's a great ball handler. Fun to watch him work. Found Willett there. Willett took the ball on the drive. A lot of speed, athleticism here for Queens. They get the ball out to the wings quick. And their wings, as you mentioned earlier, can just jump out the gym. And they're also excellent shooters. So <laughs> pick your poison here. It's a here pretty lethal combination. If you're playing Queens. They're doubling up the Cats right now, 36-18 after Willett makes his first. Now it's worse than double, 37-18. Dukes will try to break the press for a moment. Alexander giving him all he can handle. Dukes looking for anybody. Dropped into Thomas. Thomas back out to DML. DML with nothing. DML still. DML swings out to Ryerson in the corner. Yes! A little bit better offense there for the Bobcats. A lot better spacing and getting good passes that we can handle. Um, and a good corner shot there. Jacob Ryerson making his presence felt a little bit here after a rough start. So far the freshman leading the way for the Cats. Agassi gonna pull up. Oh man. Derek DeVolos had the same reaction over there. Uh, the scores tables about everyone else. He just threw his head back and said, what can you do? Duke's gonna pull up well off. A rainbow from Axi. Oh man, that's a great move from Sean Willett. Bobcats getting outplayed, out athleted, out everything. Yeah, not too many answers here for the Bobcats on the offensive or defensive end. Um, no chance really in transition so far in this game. Bobcats colliding. Offense not really running well. Freshman colliding with a redshirt senior. That's never a good sign. Thomas coming in. Wild layup. No chance. Up to Alexander. Alexander weaves his way through a couple. Almost had a spectacular layup. Rebound by Willett. One man in the middle of about four Bobcats. Somehow got the rebound. Another foul on Isaac Thomas. Oh, they're going to call it on Ryerson. It's Japin's first. That one somehow snuck out. Just got to do a better job cleaning up the boards. Having a tough enough time stopping on first positions and then transition, but second chance points. If you look at the numbers, I'm sure Queens will be perfect on the night so far. Will it does make the second, 43-21. Dukes outpacing Alexander here, picked up a foul. Smart play there by Dukes. Defender draped all over him, just kind of switched his pace there, slowed up a little bit and got bumped into in the back. And a good rest here for the Bobcats and a chance to earn some free points. Break check, that's all that was. Bobcats are in the bonus. Chandler Wright checks in for his first collegiate action. Comes in for Desmond Mitchell O'Flynn. Haven't quite gotten a peg on Chandler yet. It'd be interesting to see what kind of player he turns out to be. Tall, lanky kid. Not sure if he profiles more of a, as a shooter or if he's going to sit on the wing a lot. Try to drive in, we'll see. It'll be an interesting season to see how all these young Bobcats develop over the course of the period. And in a game like this, you just really want to work on essentially a like practice thing. You want to work on more fundamentals sure. and just get better as an offense as this game goes along. That is it. It's the first game of the year. You're playing the number two team in the country. 
with a whole bunch of new faces. You can't expect too much. Long way to go in the season. A lot of room to grow as that one got away from Willett. Bobcat ball. Dukes takes it up. Dukes has been able to outpace Alexander and Agassi so far. DePoles <laughs> coming in. Did pick up a foul. Somewhat a reckless attempt. But I guess we're used to that from Garrick at this point. Getting to the free throw line. It worked out for him there. Um, once again, slowing down the pace with the Bobcats. This is the pace they want to play at. Again, a lot of young faces. More depth tonight because it is the first game of the season against the number two team in the country. But moving forward, you got to think that bench is going to shrink. So getting in a, a little bit better game shape, working on managing the game as far as the clock, shot clock, and running your offense. Um, little things that Bobcats can work on to try to get better as the season progresses. The Bulls misses free throw. 19-point advantage for Queens. Josh Van Wiesep back in as Todd Withers headed out. And reach. Welcome to the stat sheet. Chain the right. Got to get it out of the way, right? Is that 18 fouls now here in the first half with still a minute to go between both teams? Not sure if it's just from aggression or just kind of mistakes defensively early on in the season. Chain the right immediately. Heads back out. Maybe not the first shift he wanted. They'll have a lot more to come, though. Austin Quint checks in, another freshman. Both free throws good for Queens, 45-24. Your score here. Under one minute, 40 seconds left on the clock. Duke's driving. Duke still dropped off to Chapin Ryerson. Great play there by Duke. An excellent ball hander and quick off the dribble. Just drove into the paint, dish off with the right hand, and an easy slam there for two for the Bobcats. When the Bobcats have been able to penetrate and get something off a, a dribble drive, they've been able to create. Royals taking their time. About a two-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Van Wiesett, Agassi. Agassi driving, Agassi loses control, DeBose takes it away. One second left, and I think Jordan Thomas got confused by the shot clock going off. Thought it was the game clock. There was about two seconds left. Thomas had to slow up because he heard a buzzer. And we're going to correct that. The Bobcats are going to get a chance here with about 1.2 seconds left, I think. Real strange. The shot clock went off. Thomas had the ball. You heard the buzzer. Slowed down. And that kind of faked him out. Psyched him out. For sure. If we haven't had enough shot clock problems today already for an entire season. <laughs> what a weird day today, man. Shot clock might have expired first. It's possible the shot clock just expired before Thomas even got to the ball. Interesting call there by all three officials coming together to put two seconds back on the clock for a Bobcat final possession. Lobbed in towards Thomas. Thomas can have a chance. Missed it. Was tough to gather and put that one back up. And that will take us to the half. Well, a good crowd for the Bobcats. Not so much of a great show so far. Bobcats are bringing in a whole lot of new faces, trying to get things settled down. But so far. All Queens here and this one, 45-26, your score. We head to the half. Queens on top of the Bobcats back in a few moments for Halftime Stats and more on the Bobcat Broadcast Network.
Change is constant. Technologies, careers, society. Georgia College is not about landing your first job. It's about preparing for success in a changing world. From the moment you step on campus, you have an immediate sense of belonging. At Georgia College, learning takes place all around us. Our students are critical thinkers, ready to graduate into a complex world. Georgia College, your public liberal arts university. We often get the question, where does the money go? More than 90% of NCAA revenue supports 89 championships and more than 1,100 member schools that give $2.7 billion in scholarships each year. Look around you. There are more than 450,000 student athletes competing every year, succeeding on the field, in the classroom, and in life. Bottom line, we put our money where our mission is. Hey Banks, have a seat and let me make you uncomfortable. Up those grades, son, or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me. You're still awake? Have a seat on old Mr. Bench. At least your buns will fall asleep. <laughs> is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college? Hey man, team, move down. It's a tearjerker! Change is constant. Technologies, careers, society. Georgia College is not about landing your first job. It's about preparing for success in a changing world. From the moment you step on campus, you have an immediate sense of belonging. At Georgia College, learning takes place all around us. Our students are critical thinkers, ready to graduate into a complex world. Georgia College, your public liberal arts university. We often get the question, where does the money go? More than 90% of NCAA revenue supports 89 championships and more than 1,100 member schools that give $2.7 billion in scholarships each year. Look around you. There are more than 450,000 student athletes competing every year, succeeding on the field, in the classroom, and in life. Bottom line, we put our money where our mission is. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. What you've gained as a student will be just as important to you as what you did as a player. As long as you know that you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable, there's no failure. Success on three. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes. And just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. Technologies, careers, society, it is impossible to predict the future. The jobs of tomorrow may not even exist today. At Georgia College, you will learn to be a critical thinker, to develop new ideas and out-of-the-box solutions, because those are the kind of lifelong skills you'll need in a rapidly changing world. The way we see it, it's not really about what you know. It's about how you think. Georgia College, 
your public liberal arts university. Banks, have a seat and let me make you uncomfortable. Up those grades, son, or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me. You're still awake? Have a seat on old Mr. Bench. At least your buns will fall asleep. <laughs> is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college? Hey, man, T, move down. It's a tearjerker! Change is constant. Technologies, careers, society. Georgia College is not about landing your first job. It's about preparing for success in a changing world. From the moment you step on campus, you have an immediate sense of belonging. At Georgia College, learning takes place all around us. Our students are critical thinkers, ready to graduate into a complex world. Georgia College, your public liberal arts university. We often get the question, where does the money go? More than 90% of NCAA revenue supports 89 championships and more than 1,100 member schools that give $2.7 billion in scholarships each year. Look around you. There are more than 450,000 student athletes competing every year, succeeding on the field, in the classroom, and in life. Bottom line, we put our money where our mission is. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. What you've gained as a student will be just as important to you as what you did as a player. As long as you know that you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable, there's no failure. Success on three. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes. And just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. Technologies, careers, society, it is impossible to predict the future. The jobs of tomorrow may not even exist today. At Georgia College, you will learn to be a critical thinker, to develop new ideas and out-of-the-box solutions, because those are the kind of lifelong skills you'll need in a rapidly changing world. The way we see it, it's not really about what you know. It's about how you think. Georgia College, your public liberal arts university. Banks, have a seat and let me make you uncomfortable. Up those grades, son, or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me. You're still awake? Have a seat on old Mr. Bench. At least your buns will fall asleep. 
Is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college? Hey, man, team, move down. It's a tearjerker! Change is constant. Technologies, careers, society. Georgia College is not about landing your first job. It's about preparing for success in a changing world. From the moment you step on campus, you have an immediate sense of belonging. At Georgia College, learning takes place all around us. Our students are critical thinkers, ready to graduate into a complex world. Georgia College, your public liberal arts university. We often get the question, where does the money go? More than 90% of NCAA revenue supports 89 championships and more than 1,100 member schools that give $2.7 billion in scholarships each year. Look around you. There are more than 450,000 students at themselves in a 45-26 hole. Sam Jones, Sean Montgomery, with you on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. And so far, Sean, all Queens. Yeah, like I mentioned in the first half, this second half is really just going to be a learning experience for the Bobcats. We just really want to grow, start running more of our offense, our style of play, so we can get in the rhythm and move forward with the rest of our season. Well, looking at the stat sheet for both teams leading the way so far, the bright spot tonight for Georgia College. Hopefully that didn't stick as a nickname. Hopefully there's more than enough around them to keep that from becoming a, a regular occurrence. But Jordan <laughs> Thomas, 14 points so far tonight, has a few threes to his name. Give him four threes to yeah, his name so far tonight. <laughs> Shoot with a lot of confidence out there. You can definitely tell when he has the ball, he's looking to create his own shot, create offense for the rest of his teammates um, on the offensive end. We just got to get more of that, more confidence going for our players. I see Isaac Thomas get the ball a lot in the post, but he's not taking a lot of shots. So we'll look to develop more of that here in the second half. Yeah, no points for Isaac so far. Of course, he's not a, he's not a fantastic scorer. It's not what we really have him here for, but you, you expect something from him. A little, maybe a little more than zero points at the end of the half. Yeah, for the sure. the former PBC freshman of the year. Meanwhile, the other side of the ball, Todd Withers, nine points, leads the way for the Royals. Ike Agassi. Six points, Mike Davis, six points, Josh Van Wiesup, six points, Sean Willett, five, Dino Carr, four, Solomon Smith, four, Jalen Alexander, three, Daryl White, two. The list seems to just go on and on of folks the Royals have been able to get the ball to tonight and be confident they're going to be able to take a shot and make it from deep. Looking at their stats from behind the arc, good for this, folks, 10 of 17, the Royals from behind the arc. They have enough for threes to be outpacing the Bobcats by itself so far tonight. They're shooting 51.9% from the field, 70% from the line. Meanwhile, Bobcats 8 of 25 from the field, 5 of 10 from behind the arc. A good bright spot, though, for the Bobcats, 5 or 6 from the free throw line. So when we get to the free throw line, we're making them. Just got to get there a, little, a few more times here in the second half if we want to even chip away at this lead. Turnover's about even. Exactly even. Six turnovers apiece for each team. The points off turnovers, very, very different. 13 points for Queens, just one point off a turnover tonight for the Bobcats. They're giving out rebound at 22 to 10. Offensively out rebounded six to two. Board's just not there for the Bobcats tonight. It, it's just uh, it's one of those things where you kind of have to realize that it's it's a learning curve experience kind of game. And it's the first game of the year, and it's going to take a while for things to mesh, as they kind of often do for a Bobcat team, who normally does very well down the stretch. It's just uh, it's a, maybe not the right foot they wanted to get off on tonight. Yeah, a lot of our big men, a lot of fouls early. As you mentioned, Roberts with three fouls early in that first half, so he really couldn't do much. He is a big physical presence down in the low paint, so that contributed to us being out-rebounded on the board so heavily. Um, so look for him to have a better impact here in the second half, as well as Isaac Thomas trying to get on the board for his points of this young season. Put things in perspective a little more tonight. Bobcats 26, Queens bench 21. It's been that kind of night, folks. Let's see if we can get it back on track in half number two, about 20 seconds away from the start of that. Jordan Thomas, Desmond Mitchell of Flem, Isaac Thomas. Chapin Ryerson and Justin Cave all on the floor for the Bobcats. Looks like number 33, Todd Withers, Ike Agassi, Mike Davis, number five, Louis Dionkulu, and number two, Jalen Alexander. 
on the floor for Queens. Bobcats moving left to right, have the ball to start off half number two. And moving the ball quickly down to Ryerson in the post. Back out to LaFlem. Ryerson, now Thomas top of the key. Thomas, bounce pass into Thomas. Isaac Thomas trying to make a play, throws it over his shoulder. Somehow got Jordan Thomas. Jordan Thomas loses possession and an ugly first possession for the Bobcats in the second half. Alexander goes to the floor and somehow it ends up in the hands of Jordan Thomas. Cave going to pull up. Miss Wong. An audacious attempt from Justin Cave who's been awful quiet so far tonight. Does have four points. Good looking transition there, but just an excellent close out there from Queens. Just hits the back iron and tipped out of bounds by the Bobcats and Queens will have another possession here in the early second half. Mike Agassi has been very good so far tonight. Six points, three assists. Alexander finds Agassi. Ball moving quickly again. Corner three. Missed this time. Tip back over. Agassi's going to reset things. Nice play from Alexander to get the ball back out to Agassi. Bobcats got lucky. Mike Davis missed a short porch three. Ball moves so quickly once again in Agassi. Open for three. They just worked that ball well so fast around the perimeter. You have to respect their size inside. Um, they're just making the shots that their Bobcats are giving them. It's the passing that creates it. It's the passing that creates that separation as Cave is fouled. Foul on Alexander. Give him three now. Bryce Booker in, Garrick DeBowles in as well as a couple freshmen check out. Cave and Jordan Thomas exit the game for Coach Mark Gaines' Bobcats. Coach Gaines in his fourth season as Thomas drives in and will head to the line after a block. Not sure who got in front of that. A whole mess of bodies in the lane there. Looks like Mike Davis, his first foul of the night. Better aggression there from Thomas. Got the ball at the top of the key and just drove straight down. And good contact, but you got to make our free throws now. I wonder if that was part of the halftime conversation was encouraging Isaac to be a little more aggressive. He already has five rebounds and four assists as he makes his first free throw, earns his first point of the night. So not a terrible night for Isaac. Just maybe the night, we, night we've expected from him scoring-wise. Agassi takes the ball up the floor. Agassi still kicks it out. Davis. What else would you expect? Man, oh man. It has been nonstop from the Royals. Davis now with nine points on the night. His third three. Thomas into the Bulls. The Bulls turns it around, almost got a three point chance. Instead, he'll head the line for two. Queens on the offensive end. They get the ball off within seven or eight seconds each possession, and they're always open shots, and they just make them. <laughs> if you blink, you might miss it. <laughs> it's uh, very reminiscent of the seven seconds or less Phoenix Suns back in the day. Of course, most modern teams have kind of adopted that small ball. We're going to take as many threes as you'll let us strategy, and it seems to be the, the, the trend analytically. Uh, it's, it's money ball, essentially. You see teams like the Warriors, of course, who have executed perfection over the last few years. Queens with a lot of typical guard-sized players mm -hmm. on the court, but a lot of length, a lot of athleticism, and they're just all good shooters and good passers, for that matter. And there's Davis, and Davis gets fouled. Ryerson nicked him, and he'll head to the line for three. Just a bad angle on that closeout there. Just nicked him in the calf and went flying, almost tumbling into the bench over there on the queen side. Davis's first trip of the line tonight. We'll have three chances, makes his first. Davis, a senior from Brunswick, Georgia. Somewhat of a familiar face for the Bobcats. He's a Francis Marion transfer, another Peach Belt foe. 
Got a long time before we see the Patriots down here in Milledgeville. Until late January. Booker with a lot of space, gonna pull up and hits the mid-range jumper. Long three, wow, Todd Withers. A lot of height, a lot of lanky, a lot of range. Straight net on that deep three. He was about a foot and a half past the arc there. Just so, the confidence to just pull up like that and make it. Bryce Booker's got a little confidence now, and look at that. We got a few heat check guys on this team, I think. But if we can get them rolling from time to time, they're going to score points in bunches. And Withers pass. Heads to the Queen's bench. In games like this, these are the type of possessions we're going to have to capitalize on. A uh, silly mistake there by Queens on a throw out of bounds, an errant pass. So now we have an extra possession. And the Bobcats, we just need to score some points here and bring it in a little bit closer. See if we can make this an interesting game. That's the goal at this point is just try and get this one back within some semblance of reach. Put some pressure on Queens. Never know what could happen. Booker up and under. Bryce Booker's woken up, ladies and gentlemen. And Des Mitchell Flam immediately gets called for the block. DML's first foul of the night. Bobcat's second team foul. Mike Davis will come say hey over here. Bye by us at the press table. Georgia kid has a peach tattooed on his left arm. Things you learn up close. <laughs> Agassi. Worked around, there's Alexander. And there's the same result we've seen all night. It's incredible. This is one of the best shooting displays I've ever seen in Division II basketball. We're watching a team with a very singular mission execute at an extremely high level. A ton of credit to Bart Lundy, head coach of Queens in his fifth season. He has built a mean machine of a team over there in Charlotte. It's just so hard to throw them off their game. You see a lot of teams, they'll have one or two excellent three-point shooters, and so you double-team them or you just try to run them off their spot. But with a team that all five players can shoot from anywhere on the court, you really can't do anything. Um, and then just passing as well as they do is really creating all these shots for them. So the rotations run about nine, ten deep so far tonight. And every one but let's say two or three, it looks like, have made a three. It's amazing. It's been a uh, impressive display. Some of the Bobcats can hopefully learn from as we move forward throughout the season. Not the only game this weekend for Georgia College. We'll be back with you on the Bobcat Broadcast Network as the Bobcats face a very good Emmanuel team, an Emmanuel team that played very quality basketball in a loss earlier tonight against North Georgia. That game set for 3.30. Always fun when the Lions come to town. It's always a good early test. We see them just about every other year. Yeah, it was a great game we saw at the top of the – slate today um, an overtime thriller a back and forth ball game where either team really could have won it late and then North Georgia just pulled away in overtime so Emmanuel College is going to be a good test there for the Bobcats as they're a lot similar to Queens in athleticism wise they have a lot of good long players who can rebound and shoot the basketball so we'll have to look to get a little bit better here if we hope to compete in that game tomorrow once again both teams trading saves on the out of bounds line here and finally, Queens wins the ball. Great bounce pass and a great finish from Darrell White. What a play, Jalen Alexander, the preseason All-American. Yeah, just a throw over his head, an outlet pass, and a bounce pass. That ball hit the floor two times on the way down the court, and they score in the blink of an eye. And the Bobcats looking to get some offense here as a shot misses off the right side. Jordan Thomas going for the Terrell Harris drive and floater off the glass. Couldn't find it. 
Alexander, by the way, now four assists, ties him for the game high with our very own Isaac Thomas, who's having a great night distributing the ball. Isaac, an excellent passer in the low post. Just gets that ball up. He's always looking to pass, too. And that's a good factor in his game, and it's going to be key if the Bobcats want to compete in the Peach Belt this season. Floater no good from Agassi, and referee Bruce Benedict will call a foul. Not sure who tripped who there. Looked like number 25, Daryl White, get called for the foul. His second. Austin Duke heads in. Cole Roberts also in for the Cats. Bruce Benedict, referee, right in front of us. Former Atlanta Brave. Catcher back in the day. Back when the Bravos weren't, weren't exactly stellar. <laughs> of course, that's a very fa familiar feeling. Yeah, a lot of similarities to right now. 17 Braves. Jordan Thomas. Foul somewhere off the ball. Going to be on number 33, Todd Withers. He's incredulous. Should be the fifth team foul for Queens. Scoreboard awarded to the Bobcats for some reason. Let's see if that comes back to bite us. First game for everybody. A lot of interesting storylines here for the Bobcats. A lot of young players, a mm -hmm. lot of figuring out what this team is actually going to be. As <laughs> Inbounds continue to trouble the Bobcats. Duke's driving in almost an excellent finish. Cole Roberts tried to break the backboard. Never had the ball in his hand. Checks his knee. I guess when you get up that high, all you can do is grab on and hope you don't hit your head on the rim. Duke's looking for anybody. Long pull up from Booker. Heat check there. Nothing doing. Roberts goes down hard to the floor. Cole gets packed up quickly, thank goodness. Was worried about the big man for a moment. Dropped off, and the Bulls almost took out number 24, Tate Small. Did he travel there? Yes, they called a travel. So a good job by the Bulls hustling back on defense to get him in the air and get his feet moving so the Bobcats can have a, another possession here. Small stuck in the game. That's his first appearance of the night. Bryce Booker is going to shoot it no matter where he is at this point. Does earn a foul. It's a bailout foul for sure, though. Not a great shot there. Not a great couple of shots on the last few possessions. But the Bobcats getting the ball in the paint, I guess, a bright spot. Really like Dukes, a young athletic guard, really quick off the ball, great ball mm -hmm. handling, bright spot. Just want to see him shoot the ball and be able to spread the floor just a little bit more so he can dump the ball off to our big men inside. I would love to see him try to dribble drive a little bit more, kick the ball out. It seems like a couple of times the Bobcats have been able to do that. They've been able to create some cleaner chances rather than, for example, Booker taking on Queens 105. Yeah, one of our quicker players, so he can really create for a lot of other people, cause problems for the defense. He just has to assert himself a little bit more. Of course, the rest of the Bobcats have to help him out too, move a little bit, make things happen. 37-61, 13-40 left on the clock here in Milledgeville. Three by Davis off the mark. Jackson got up for it, but Dukes will claim it. Austin Dukes speeding back the other way. Here's the Bulls. Nothing called. Good no call, I think. And now here's Thomas making a play to swat that one out of bounds. Crowd has dissipated a little bit. Not too much, though. Had a great crowd at the start. Our crowds are always spread out here in the Centennial Center. It makes it look <laughs> more thin than they are. You got people sitting on all four sides behind each basket and behind the bench and a good crowd to hear behind the press table. Upwards of, imagine, 500, 600. Yeah, for sure. The start of the game. Pass out to Jackson. Easy three. Or Jalen Alexander, excuse me. Alexander, give him nine now on the night. Duke's driving in the baseline. 
drew a foul. I believe that's going to go on Daryl White, his third foul. A whole bunch of folks checking in. Chapin Ryerson in for Garrick DeBowles. Josh Van Wiesep in for Queens. And Sean Willett in as well. Also checking in is Todd Withers. Davis and Small off for Queens. Three taken immediately by Dukes. Nothing doing. Driving and missing this time. Sean Willett. Try the reverse. Thomas going to pull up almost. That one rolled around every bit of the rim for waving at him and jumping out. The ball movement for Queens is just amazing. They keep it moving and they move it very, very quickly. There's a lot of speed, a lot of pace on each pass. And here's Cole Roberts getting the floor trying to win a fight. Wait for somebody to call something. Finally, a jump ball call. Possession arrow heading towards Queens. A lot better effort here for the Bobcats in the second half. Getting in the paint more, a lot more drives and kicks. And we got to the foul line. Six fouls on Queens here with still 11.54 to go in the second half. So working on a few things coming out of the locker room and doing a little bit better here. 27 point advantage for Queens. You want to sit there and do the math. But a couple of Bobcats once again having pretty good games. Of course, number four, Jordan Thomas. Been very, very good so far for the Cats. 14 points. Almost had 17 a moment ago before that ball rolled out on him. Halftime games going on here. Out of the Centennial Center. Georgia College's all-time score leader, Amanda Bartholomew, trying to play a little basketball. Perhaps she could have kicked it in. We've done a little better. Right now, Jordan Thomas maybe not having the second half we expected after a 14-point first half. Yeah, it came out hot. Got a really, lot of really good shots that he could make. And like you mentioned, that shot that he just took, that deep three rimmed out for him. So he's getting some good looks, just not hitting as many as he did in the first half. Still a bright spot as he's been very aggressive. And really our only sole offensive threat here for the Bobcats tonight. Meanwhile, Bryce Booker has had a nice second half. Eight points for him in half number two. He's the only Bobcat besides uh, Jordan Thomas with more than five. Isaac Thomas has tried to get to the rim a little bit more here. Went to the line once, made one of two. He is getting draped every time the ball gets thrown in down low. There's a couple folks on him just about every step of the way. He's going to have a tough time scoring for anybody. And immediately as the ball is back in play, foul on the Bobcats. Javen Ryerson. As you mentioned, every time we drop the ball in for to a Bobcat on the low post, they're doubling or tripling them. They're just daring our guards to shoot. So we're just going to have to have a couple more made shots if we want to stretch the floor a little bit so Isaac and Garrett can really get going on the inside. We really are lacking perimeter shooting, it feels like, and that's why it's so good to see Jordan Thomas step up. And once again, Josh Van Wiesup, extremely deadly from the corner. Bryce Booker driving in quickly too high off the glass. Cole Roberts, the big man, doing the dirty work down low. An excellent player, missed a lot of the first half because of foul trouble, as you mentioned. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> he just put up, pulled up a, for another three that I thought was down. I might have just quit. Todd Withers barely off the mark. And here comes Thomas. He wanted goaltending. Thought it was off the glass instead. Blocked. I think that was Sean Willett who got a piece of it. Now Willett down low. Somehow got a long arm out underneath the basket and curled that one up and in. What a play on both ends of the floor. Duke's driving. Terrible shot. Alexander back the other way up and in and easy. Player down the other end of the floor. That's number 33, Todd Withers. Hate to see that right now, especially 
with a 30-plus uh, point lead. These players had a great night tonight, 12 points, 4-6 from behind the arc. Doesn't look to be reaching for any particular part of his leg or anything like that. May have just rolled an ankle real quick. Yeah, he's laughing about it. Just rolled it a little bit. He's going <laughs> to smile about it and walk it off. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Yeah, it just seems like he got like the wind knocked out of him or something. Maybe an elbow or a knee to a body part. Shakes that one off, drops <laughs> it off the court, and we are... You got to think about maybe coaching. an unmentionable body part. <laughs> <laughs> you got to think about coaching here too. Mm -hmm. You've had a couple of yeah, that's an injury scare for sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and you're up this big in the ball game. Maybe that will be the night for him. An excellent ball game, stretching the floor, rebounding inside. Just a complete player for Queens, and he's going to have a great season, I'm sure. For the Bobcats at this point, do you start working in maybe some of your guys who haven't got as much of a chance, or you try to keep your normal kind of starting five in and see if they can gel a little bit more as the night goes on as Thomas dispossessed. Back the other way, Alexander. Back out, Van Wiesen. Will it? Driving and off the ball foul on Austin Dukes. What do you think, Sean? Do we keep our guys in here? Or? It's a tough question because, like I mentioned, I mean, you want to just work on little things and get better. As we progress, you want to run set plays that you, you want to get used to going against a live team with your players who are going to be on the court for the rest of the season. But at this point, play has been so sloppy for the Bobcats. I mean, how much are you actually getting out of this? So just in the next few minutes, maybe looking for some bright players to come in off the bench, see if you have some players who can shoot in an actual game setting, stretch the floor, some young guards. Um, just give them a couple more minutes to see what they're about. Because, I mean, at this point, the game is done. So mm -hmm. it's really just all about learning experiences here for the Bobcats. You're kind of spot on with talking about sloppy play. Sometimes you end up developing bad habits, even with the repetitions you're getting. For sure. So it's just a question that Gaines is going to have to ask himself. Him and Aquino over there doing a good job pulling this young Bobcats team together. Um, just... What do you want to plan for <laughs> the rest of the season? Do you mm -hmm. want to see if you have some extra depth on that bench, or do you just want to try to run better plays with the people you know are going to be out in the court? And that is just a dilemma that every coach usually has with a young team. Um, and you just have to find that mesh point maybe at a later stage in this game. Thomas for the alley-oops. Oops. Alley-oops. Alley-oops. I don't disagree. Quick drive there from Sean Willett. Ball was just a little bit behind Isaac, and now Justin Cave going to pull up. Nothing doing. Hey, there's Cole Roberts. Another huge factor is game conditioning. Yeah. You haven't played that many real live games, so you want to get your players a little bit more extra reps so they can get up to that game tempo, game conditioning, so they'll have their legs under them, especially when it gets late in the season as Isaac Thomas gets trampled in the paint. Foul called before the three from Van Wiesip goes down. And I think we're probably going to get a call for Isaac. Getting pushed around a little bit. Well, maybe he pushed around someone a little bit. Fourth foul for Isaac. And a line shift coming for Queens. A whole bunch of folks. Ike Agassi, number four, Mike Davis in. Number 20. Trevor Recchio in as well. And also bringing Daryl White. Ben Wees up at the line. 41 73 9 left to play in this one. Ryan Aquino and Coach Gaines on the far side discussing the next course of action. Ben Wees up heads out after a couple made free throws and comes Todd Withers, who's recovered from whatever ailment. Plagued him just a few moments ago. Still a little bit of press here from Queens. Not taking any possessions off, I wouldn't see. Mitchell LaFlam is another one we got to get going. He's got to shoot the ball a little bit better here for the Bobcats. 0 for 4 on the night. Not really creating any offense from the point guard position either. So he's going to have to step up big as a veteran leader on this Bobcat team. I believe the only senior on this team. 
as Garrick DeBolas picks up his second foul. To the line goes Queens and number four, Mike Davis. Thirty-three point advantage now, thirty-four for Queens. Jordan Thomas about to check in. We'll see for who. Dez had a great game against Georgia Southern about a week ago as Cole Roberts heads out. Team high, 11 points for him, couple threes. Created a few times. That Georgia Southern game, exhibition ended up 92-59. I'm not entirely convinced this Queens team isn't better than that Georgia Southern team. Cave traveled. It would be interesting to see that. <laughs> I tell you, of course, Queens went up to Virginia Commonwealth last year. Fantastic program for many, many years. NCAA tournament team last year beat them. Went up to Wake Forest last week. Only lost by two. That's an ACC team. It is interesting. No disrespect to the Sun just Belt. A sport. If you can shoot and you're athletic enough to get the ball out and you don't turn the ball over, um, essentially you can play with anybody. This Queens Absolutely. team is incredible to watch. 30 and 4 last year. Only made it to the Sweet 16. Maybe a disappointing end result for the Royals. Kicked out and. Technologies, careers, society. It is impossible to predict the future. The jobs of tomorrow may not even exist today. At Georgia College, you will learn to be a critical thinker, to develop new ideas and out of the box solutions because those are the kind of lifelong skills you'll need in a rapidly changing world. The way we see it, it's not really about what you know. It's about how you think. Georgia College, your public liberal arts university. Back here in Milledgeville, we may have had some technical difficulties with our stream. Sorry if we dropped that on you for a moment. Didn't miss a whole lot. 83-40 Swix as Dukes drives in, misses the layup. Austin Dukes, not a fantastic night from the field so far. I believe he's 0 for 4. Queen slowing things down just a bit with a nearly 40 point lead. Recchio out of Solomon Smith back to Recchio into Van Wiesen and in to number five, Louis Dinkulu. Dinkulu got fouled. A couple of sparks from the Bobcat offense tonight. As you mentioned, Booker Thomas having good spurts. Thomas is having an excellent first half. Booker really coming out in the second half. Media timeout. We'll go and stay with you since we had a little bit of an extended timeout there with some of our technical difficulties, we think. Appreciate y'all joining us on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. Again, two games coming up tomorrow. North Georgia versus Queens at 1.30. Then the Bobcats try to rebound and detox a little bit against Emmanuel. Hope they can pull off a win against an always good Emmanuel team. Just got to have some more consistency. Not enough consistently good possessions for the Bobcats. We haven't strung together that many in a row. I can't think of for any stretch tonight. Um, but once again, a good team in Queens uh, applying a lot of pressure on the offensive end. Um, the Bobcats just haven't been able to deal with it tonight. But not to say that we won't be able to deal with it facing other teams in the future. So looking to see some growth in these last three minutes and 22 seconds. And we'll head into the ball game tomorrow with some confidence that we can play a little bit better than we did today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Meanwhile, on the girls' side of the ball, our Bobcat women lost today, but uh, against a good team, number 14, Wingate. 11-point loss for the Bobcat women tonight. They'll be a fun team to watch, though. They have a lot of good athletes. Be fun to watch them progress throughout the year. Coach Mo Smith's Bobcat team. 84-46, and Dean Kulu hits both free throws. Give him four points on the night. Driving in is Quince and well off the mark on the shot. 85-46. Ball goes back towards Queens. It would be fun to see a few of the players may not get as much playing time this year. Get into this one. 
for sure. Andrew Presswood sitting over on the bench. Ethan Smith as well. Ryan Dobbs checking in. There we go. Right on cue. Dean Koo driving in. And double dribble. Calling Dean Koo. And here's Ryan Dobbs. And Ryan Dobbs put on a show in Statesboro, y'all. Came in for about two minutes. Hit two long threes. He was extremely efficient. He was on pace for about... <laughs> uh, 120 points that night in States, bro. They just didn't play him enough, in my opinion. And here's Dobbs right here. Dobbs, a great shooter. Just maybe lacking in the size department. Maybe not able to do enough defensively to play him the entire time. Matt McCorkle also into the game for the Bobcats. Chandler Wright on the floor as well. And there's McCorkle off the mark. Roberts gets a rebound. Roberts going against the world. Picks up a foul. Foul called on Dean Kulu, I believe. Robert sinks his first. Roberts makes both. Big man's a pretty good free throw shooter when it comes down to it. Just looking at the numbers, if the live stats are correct, 21 now of our 48 points are off of free throws. <laughs> Bob has been decent tonight from the stripe for sure. Which is a good sign going forward. For sure. To get to the line and to make the shots. Just got to get to the line maybe more often now. Dinkulu driving. Dinkulu still. Oh, just missed an excellent layup. Jalen Wright picks it up. Here's Dobbs. McCorkle. Quint. Quint looking for anyone. Dobbs has the pass tipped and taken away. Right, number 22, Josh Brodowitz, and uh, did he go on the line? Yes, he did. He stepped on the line. Ball goes back to the Bobcats. 151 left in this one. Eighty-five, forty-eight Queens, who were hot from the get-go. They jumped out to a 30 to 10 lead, and seemingly the blink of an eye, and never looked back. Here's Dobbs off the mark. Long pass into Dean Kulu. Great pass into Dean Kulu. Assist for Brodowitz. Another couple points for Dean Kulu. As that ball is tipped away by Recchio. Bobcats will take a timeout. Try to get things sorted out with 1.30 left in this one. After the game, we will go ahead and give you the post-game stats. Also have a short talk with Coach Mark Gainis after a uh, rough first night as the Bobcats begin the 2017-18 season. What a night to grow on. For sure. Trying to take as many positives as can. Just gotta figure out where consistent scoring is gonna come from. And you gotta get a little bit more scoring from the post. When they dump the ball into Isaac, he's gotta be able to create better offense for the team so our shooters can have a little bit more space on the perimeter. 130 left on the board when the Bobcats break the huddle. Looking up at the upcoming schedule for Georgia College. Of course, Emmanuel tomorrow, they go to, or Payne, rather, comes here on the 17th. That's a 6 p.m. start. And the Bobcats take a couple road games, a trip up to Clark, Atlanta. Thanksgiving break happens, and then conference play starts that quickly. 11:27, they travel to face Lander, and then the first conference home game, December 2nd, as conference rival Augusta comes to the old capital. Would love to pull one over on the Jaguars. Be the first one in a long time. Dobbs looking for space, finds McCorkle. Ball tipped away. Pass. Knocked away. Ball just not moving quick enough right now for the Cats. Not at all. We're just making bad passes, getting pushed so far out in the perimeter that we can't run our offense. Um, so we're just going to have to try to change that a little bit in the future. Dobbs going to take a long three. Missed it. Not quite the performance he had against Georgia Southern. Great outlet again as Cole Roberts goes up into the stands. 
And Dean Kulu is able to lay it up. Another great pass into him. Roberts going to take a mid-range shot off the glass and in. Good play from Cole. Yeah, good post play there. Sealing off the defender, get the ball spot up, and just shoot off the glass. That's going to be a shot that if he can make that, he's going to be a force in the league as the season progresses. Got a couple more years out of Cole, too. He's just a sophomore. 30 seconds left in this one. Pass underneath. A good pass from Josh Brodowitz. Not enough, though. Shot missed. 24 seconds left now. Dobbs. Over to Quint. Quint looking for an option. Drives. Pulls back. Roberts going to take a three. Hello, Cole Roberts. Big man showing some range. Scooping up a few points here and there in the late goings. 89-53. Give Cole about 12, maybe 15 now on the night. And that will end things. That's not a bad way to cap things off, though. Bobcats do fall here tonight to the number two team in the country. They looked every bit of it as they came out early and just drained three after three after three. Queens ends up with an 89-53 victory in this one. Tough start of the year for the Bobcats. They're back again tomorrow on the Bobcat Broadcast Network 3.30 start versus Emmanuel. Thanks for joining us, folks. We will be right back in a few moments with post-game stats and a post-game interview. Back in a second on the Bobcat Broadcast Network is the Bobcats. Losers tonight to Queens. Sam Jones back with you here on the Bobcat Broadcast Network again. Bobcats fall to Queens tonight, but one of the bright spots tonight, the performance of Jordan Thomas, who joins us now on the BBN. Jordan, first collegiate start, how'd it feel? Uh, it was good. It just felt good getting out there first college game, first real game. So coaches wanted me to be aggressive, so I just aggressive shoot the ball when I'm open. So You seem confident. I mean, you yeah. got out there and immediately started throwing up threes. How'd it feel when that first one went in? It good. I felt when the first one went in, I was like, I'm good, I'm good. When the second one hit, I was like, I'm going to be straight. Things got a little tougher for you in the second half, maybe yeah. not quite the output you wanted. They kind of adjust to you, think, a little bit in that second half? Yeah, they stopped playing me up tight uh, when, the, when they was driving, so I couldn't really get open like that. But I just got to come off screens better and finish better and sure. get, to the, get to the free throw line. Absolutely. Well, Jordan, a tough loss tonight uh, as things starting to get going here as we begin the season. How do you guys kind of rebound from this tomorrow? Uh, we just got to know that this game is over and just uh, be ready for our uh, game tomorrow. Any positives you saw from a personal perspective tonight? Um, we cheer for our teammates. That's, that's good. And we run the plays well on offense. We just got to do better on defense. Absolutely. Well, Jordan, thank you so much, man. Congratulations on your first career game. Great thank night. You. Good to talk to you. We're going to grab Coach Gaines here in just a second as soon as we can. Big thanks to Jordan for talking to us. Coach Gaines heading over. And Coach, hey, how you doing? Join us on the Bobcat All Broadcast right. Network. We appreciate it as always. Appreciate y'all coming. You know yeah. that's that's an incredible team over there at Queens. So yeah, I'm not I tell sure what you. else you can say about them. A good team and um, great team. Uh, there's reason they're ranked high, and uh, I thought they shot the ball just extremely well. Some of them were um, not contested like we wanted to, but a lot of them worked being contested, and uh, it's one of the best shooting teams I've ever seen uh, at the Division II level. Uh, everybody can make shots, mm -hmm. uh, even the forwards and the guards. And uh, they are, they are, uh, they're they're ranked number two for a reason. Very, very strong team. Very strong team. And they, they beat you guys by, it looks like, 36 here tonight. But what can you take away from this that you can kind of move on with tomorrow? Yeah. Kind of rebound um, from? You know, the good thing about it is just one game of the, the season. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has nothing to do with tomorrow. So, um, you know, we just tell the guys every day, just uh, pay that toll. You know, you got to pay it every day. You go to work. And. You know, we learned a lesson tonight. I, I didn't think that um, our, our older guys played very well. Uh, I thought that um, the younger guys actually did a really nice job, especially uh, Chapin and Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the, the we, and I thought Garrett did some nice things as well. I just didn't think as a team, you know, when you play a team like that and you get down, then it kind of forces you to play up-tempo, and then what's that going to do? Yeah. It's not good for the, the, the good guys. and. So, uh, you know, give give the credit to them. Uh, I thought in the second half they um, out-hustled us to some loose balls, which you know, that's something that we can, um, you know, we, we, can, we should be able to uh, control our effort. Uh, I, th I just think they got some loose balls that we teams here just have not really given up. 
Um, but they're good. I mean, uh, not sure if 36 points good every night, but I know they were 36 points better tonight. Absolutely. Well, you guys face Emmanuel tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know if you got to see a little bit of their I game, did. very back and forth in North Georgia. What yeah, can you tell team. us about the Lions? Yeah, um, they got guys who can shoot. Uh, they got good point guard play, and um, you know they um, they have a good team. They're, they're always they're very well coached, and uh, T.J. Rosine's a great coach, outstanding coach. And uh, you know they they sh they were down seven or ten points in the last couple minutes and came back, and that's just co the culture they have there. But they're they're a gritty team, and uh, we got we got to come back. And we need to play better. Uh, but it's a long season, game one. Um, you know, we've got 27 more. Defensively, it seems like you guys got caught out a few times in rotations as far as allowing open shots. Yeah. Is it, is, it is it a good chance for you guys to adjust to that tomorrow with another good three-point shooting team? Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good question. You know, they, in the first half, we played mostly man-to-man, -man and they hit mm -hmm. 10 threes. So, you know, you play man against them, you're giving up. They went 10 for 17 in the first half. And the second half, um, I'm not sure how many threes they hit in the second half or total. But, uh, you know, they hit some threes in the corner on us against our zone. But they were making shots against our man. You know, we're just trying to slow the game down a little bit. Uh, it really wasn't uh, in the first half uh, just catching and shooting threes. It was them driving it and the defense collapsing and uh, them kicking it and making shots. So I thought our, our containment was not very good, which allowed threes. Second half, we're playing zone. I didn't think it was our containment. I just think our rotations weren't as good. We weren't quite as sharp defensively as we, we need to, obviously. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to give a Queen some credit. They're really, really good. Um, you know, we scheduled that game uh, knowing that they were really good. And, um, you know, it just kind of it measures our team and, uh, every, you know, all the players. And uh, we're not going to get discouraged about it. We've got a lot, lot of work to do. Absolutely. Well, Coach, thank you so much. Let's get talk to the players. I appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks Have for coming out. Night. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right, folks, that will wrap it up from the Centennial Center here on the campus of Georgia College here in beautiful Milledgeville, Georgia. Sam Jones with you. Sean Montgomery joined me for the rest of the night. Christian Thomas up there pressing the buttons as well. Thanks to everyone else who helped out on the Bobcat Broadcast Network tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. 1.30 start time for North Georgia and Queens. 3.30 for the Bobcats and Emmanuel. Going to be a couple of good games on the way here in Bobcat country. Hope to see you then. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe and go Bobcats.